Hello, hello, welcome to Everyday Ordinary, Extraordinary Women. I'm Martina and I'm here with Christina. Hello, everyone. And we are your, your hosts today. And we were inspired to create this podcast after pondering on this question. What would the world look like where every person can be inspired by every person? Usually we're very quick to compare and judge ourselves and others. And when we do that, everybody's losing. So depending on my point of view, I can either feel small because I've come out lacking or arrogant and dismissive because I feel superior. And those are the only two options and neither of those options actually make us feel good at all. So here's our thought. Someone else's normal is someone else's extraordinary. Judgment comes from first impressions and we invite you, the listener, to go beyond first impressions and see the magic everywhere. There's inspiration at every corner, in everyone, if we're willing to look. And today, we're here with Amanda. Amanda, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Amanda. I live in Seattle. I'm a nursing student, and I am really excited to be here. (laughs) Really, really excited to be here. And you are engaged, right? Yes recently engaged and today uh, we're going to go look at two wedding venues and um, I'm currently wearing hair curlers because this is the very first time I've ever had hair curlers to try and I was like why not when I'm doing a podcast in the morning that sounds like a great idea let's do something brand new that takes forever to learn but I'm just going to do it in five minutes um but no, yeah, I, I'm a nursing student. I'm I'm in a band. I'm a lyricist. I write lyrics. I write poetry. I consider myself a domestic abuse survivor. Um, I have a wonderful family. Uh, I feel very blessed and very lucky to have a family that's here, that's local in the state. And um, yeah, I've got four pets. I have two dogs. One is gigantic, one is, and very young, one is very tiny and very old and a tripod. My young one is here whimpering because she doesn't know what I'm doing and she hates that I'm not giving her love and attention because she's gigantic. She's like a big polar bear. And and then I've got two two cats as well. One that's very, oh boy, one that's very young and easily to to love on and then the other is older and kind of fat and doesn't like to be acknowledged in the house she's the roommate that we don't like but we love her because we have to hi this is luna who's currently pawing at me um yeah i i i've been told that i live a a very busy life but i don't feel that i kind of feel like it's slow actually but i'm aging quickly um (laughs) So it's a weird kind of like, but what do you mean I'm busy? I'm moving at a snail's pace. I have to do all the things still. Um, Yeah, so I guess I'm busy. There's that too. It's it's so cool because I, I remember, so I remember when I was pregnant with my second child and we were in the process of buying our first house and I was looking at the picture and I was like, okay, something is really wrong because I'm still a little girl pregnant with my second child buying a house how is that (laughs) right (laughs) because in our minds it's like well that was you know (laughs) and then there's the great and like whatever to show for oh no 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 (laughs) I don't I I don't observe the grays yet they they get a lot of money put onto them by getting lacquered (laughs) and bleached and then re-dyed I'm a I'm a fan of the balayage and after my well through my divorce because my um my ex-husband didn't like chemicals. <laughs> um, so that meant I didn't wear makeup. So there was no like physical expression of artistry or creativity. So like makeup wasn't a thing anymore. And I just kind of got, you know, a little lost mentally there <laughs> with, oh, this is my decision. And I get to do what I want. Um, so after and through my divorce, I was like, I'm going to dye my hair because I feel like I just lost a chunk of time in this marriage. And I need to now revert and go back and I want to be youthful and I want to be exciting and um yeah so ever since then I just dye the heck out of my hair and I'm I'm okay with it 
I, it's kind of like a mourning period for the like dollar bill that you have to pay. I have to mourn the waste of that. Like I have to save up for it, but it's like a birthday gift. You know, it's like a, this is a self-care task and this is, this is worth the, the, the money is. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. So, and it's self-care, yeah. right? It's like I it's self-care. I, I, like for me, it's walking out of the hairdresser. It's like ah, life is good, right? It, it, <laughs> usually it is that. It's so beautiful. Yeah. I just wanted to thank you for being here, particularly today, because you're gonna go see uh, wedding venues and mm -hmm. you're so busy and doing so much. And if you could answer, finish this sentence for us. If we really knew mm -hmm. you, what would we know? Ooh, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, if you really knew me, what would you, what would you know? I think there's only a couple people in the world that really know me. I think my mother, my parents. My parents for sure. There's a few people then. So my parents for sure. I think definitely my my father in a sense, but he's like male and he like may not know like the mechanism of like living in this, you know, world as a female person. Um, but there's only a few other people. And I think that uh, what would you really know is that deep down there is a river of just like sadness and self-doubt and um like filled with hope and like dreams and wishes and it's like this magical place that I hate going to um and I think that that's why people say man you're so busy like when people tell me that I feel like it's my mask is showing a little bit because that is how I've learned to cope is to just be busy and to keep myself occupied so that I'm not floating on that river of such a strange emotional state. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. And I've never talked about it like this. So articulating it is a little difficult. So yeah, that there is that kind of river of wandering and confusion and feeling a little behind, not like, like, not socioeconomically behind or like educationally behind. I've been very lucky in this life. I've been very blessed for so many reasons and so many levels of this life, but there is that current of just complete and utter sadness and like a sense of loneliness that doesn't really like that thirst for like belonging. It never really gets quenched. Like it, it never really gets fulfilled. I think it does sometimes, but then that's kind of like a baseline that I tried to hide and I tried to like acknowledge that it's over there, but I am busy because of that, I think. Yeah. I think you brought up a, a few good points there, but I think this is a common theme we've had going on lately where I think we're all walking around with this unconscious level of not feeling supported or safe or and so then we're always walking around like do we fit in do we not fit in and then all the things we do to compensate for that right and so is it staying mm -hmm. super busy is it hiding out is it saying yes to things that we would say no to just so we can please people right so that they like us like it's a lot of things yeah. that that go on when we, we when we don't really feel safe and secure um in our in our world where we're at yeah and I, I think it's you know it's one of those things like I, I don't know that I actually learned to be comfortable with myself with who I am authentically and genuinely and I've I've lost that along the way you know I'm 37 almost 30 geez. okay I'm 36 <laughs> I'm not 37 <laughs> yet <laughs> I'm not like I'm five I'm, I'm five and a half no no I'm, I'm still 36 I'm leaning into that uh, <laughs> um but uh, I, I think it's just one of those things like I'm I, I and and through and after my divorce I, I kind of felt like I'm waking up to my life I'm waking up to myself because I've been so bombarded with caretaking and um masking what was going on in that marriage and um and 
I will say like the only thing I really care to say about my ex-husband is that he's on his journey and I don't fault him for that. And I don't have any, there's no animosity. There's no anger. It's more inward showing. So regarding that, that's really all I feel like I need to say because it's so closed for me. I, I've, I've overcome it and I don't feel like I need to say, like, I just, I went through that. Sorry, I'm kind of bouncing around. I went through that process thinking, I want no regrets about this process. You know, this is something that I have to not pretend but after and through and after that process, I made a pact with myself that when it comes to important things, not like my favorite pizza or my favorite ice cream, when it comes to important things, I'm not lying anymore. I'm not lying to you and I'm not lying to myself. And I think that that's what's been healing that kind of undercurrent of sadness and loneliness because it's not sure when I compare myself to like every single one of my friends having kids and babies and they're not even like newbies yet they're like children toddlers adolescents and I'm still not on that train yet it is a sense of sadness because I feel like I'm left out and I don't get to experience motherhood yet and it's that one thing that I just want oh my god it's like I cannot wait to be a mom I cannot wait to be a parent um and I kind of waited in my marriage from like the situation to become healthier and so it's that kind of like feeling of god have I waited too long and it's very self-imposing sadness you know what I mean so it's not like I I shit on my sorry can I can I curse um, yes. thank you I'm sorry um I, it's not that I shit on myself constantly but is the undercurrent of like wow you're kind of like messy today maybe you should clean up a little bit like tight tighten up like get those curlers in try something new you know <laughs> like maybe you should you know wash your face today brush your teeth like it's like those basic self-care tasks that I really lost track of in the depression in my marriage and getting lost by, in my marriage by normalizing bad behavior that I learned to put up with and I learned to normalize to survive it. So I'm still coming out of that, you know, three, four years later and I'm coming up on that anniversary. So it's kind of like, am I where I need to, like I'm flipping through the pages of my life. Am I where I want to be? Am I where I can be? And am I okay with that? And if I'm not okay with it, how can I calm myself down, you know, settle my nerves and remind myself at how well I am doing and not focusing on the lacking. So, yeah, wow, that was a really long explanation. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, sorry about, but it's also the piece of, of trusting that you're, the divine timing is always working out for you, right? Like no one else's timing, it's your timing, right? So, yeah. and trusting that, you know, you had that relationship that you had in the past so you could grow and learn from it. And that's what mm -hmm. you're doing right now. You're growing and you're learning and you're <laughs> on, you're, you know, and it's setting you up to powerfully create what's next. And you're going to create the, you know, being a mother and all of that. Like, you got it, girl. It's all happening. It's just happening yeah. on your time. And, and, and yeah. the other part is like, welcome to being human, right? We, we all have that negative self-talk. Right. We we believe we're we're alone in it, but we all have it, right? We we literally yeah. all yeah. have it. And I'm, you know, I'm one of my clients, she's she's over 80. And and as I'm leading her through, like as I'm coaching her, like her goal is to stop the negative self-talk or like get it in check, right? Because we all have it and we're so like what what would be possible if we would treat ourselves like we treat our best friend oh but, my we've gosh. Been, but, yes. we've been, but we've been taught something completely different right oh, and, I and, love that and then one I of the coaching that. so when when I trained uh Debbie Ford the woman I trained with she used to have this beautiful doll she would put, she would sit, sit that baby in the leader chair and say, oh, my beautiful, how are you today? And then she would pick it up by the legs and toss and it's like, oh, and you have not done this and you have not done that. And, not done that. and then when the head was falling off, she would place it back in the chair and she said, oh, honey, now go out and have a great day. 
And like the imagery of that, that's how we treat ourselves. And it was so, um, I don't know, <laughs> mind blowing to see it yeah. in action. And it's just really, could we treat ourselves <clears throat> like we are a precious, a precious child, our best friend, our like, mm -hmm. however, whatever it is, right? So I, I love that you said that because when I encounter a friend who's like, being so hard on themselves unreasonably or even my you know my partner even when like they're like just shitting on themselves like totally like going for it you know no no reservations just like really getting in there and I'll I'll turn to them and I'll say stop beating up my best friend stop bullying my best friend I love that you said that I've never had somebody say that to me I think my partner has like caught on and has said that a few times but man it makes a difference doesn't it yeah, and my yeah. one of our closest friends says, "Don't talk about my friend like this." You know, yeah, it's exactly, exactly the same. And we were we actually in sorry, I'm just gonna do go on a tangent here quickly. But we were talking about with the group I'm in. We were talking about how come, you know, it's easy for us to cheer somebody else on, right? It's like there was this gal and she's thinking about buying herself a car and we're all like, yes, you go, go buy yourself that car. You want it, go for it. But but if it's about ourselves, we're like, well, it's a lot of money. Do I deserve it? Like, and that's part of our conditioning, right? That's that's part of, of our conditioning and what we've been told, like what society told <laughs> us and then what we started telling ourselves, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. that's a good point. Well, and... Um, I do, I do, uh, I liked what uh, Christina had to say there, you know, about like, I'm on my own schedule. We're all on our own schedule. Like, I don't look at other people and be like, man, they really ought to hurry up because on my timeline, they're way behind or something, you know, I never do that. Isn't that odd? And like, I have such, such a good, healthy group of friends. And I, I mean, healthy, not that they're all like, you know, I mean, we all have issues, let's be real. Like, I'm not saying mentally healthy and I'm not saying physically, but like, we are such a healthy group of like women. I've got a few male friends um, and I've got a few friends who identify as they, them. Like, it's just a healthy relationship. And now that I'm in my mid thirties, not late 30, mid, I'm still 36, mid, um, you know, it's, it's important to have those kind of relationships now. There's no malicious intent. There's no, like, you learn how to get rid of those toxic people, I feel like. And for me, I feel like maybe it's a little too late, but I got there. And I have such a good, um, like, base for motherhood because, because all of my friends have it. And I get to see these beautiful, educated, strong, independent women in relationships, in marriages, coming out of marriages, parenting the hell out of parenthood. You know what I mean? They are killing it with their motherliness and their feminineness and that divine energy. I have no idea what that's like. And as a nurse, nursing student, this quarter, I'm doing labor, delivery, and peds. And I just had my first 12-hour shift in labor and delivery um, and postpartum this past Saturday, a few days ago. And I got to see a birth, like a, like I was holding my patient's leg and she was going for it. It was her third child, her third girl. Dad was on the right side of me, it, you know, between me and mom, he's downing energy drinks because mom has been fighting, you know, she's been going through the thick of it for like 10 hours since like midnight, you know, and then there is their baby girl. And I got to see the whole thing and it was life-changing. Like it wasn't my experience and I was on the periphery, but as a healthcare provider being, and, and like someone who struggles with that divine feminine energy with themselves. Cause honestly, ladies, I am a tomboy. These curlers feel a weird. I'm 36 and this is the first time I've had curlers. Weird. Like plaster makeup on. Weird. I'm a sporty spice, man. I like to just get gross in nature and be covered in mud and, bite my nails and not be that typical you know what is it riveter 
Jody the Riveter. What is her name? Rosie the Riveter. There it is. Rosie. I'm like, I'm like Roseanne the Riveter. You know, I got the axe over my shoulder. Like I'm ready to chop that wood. You know, like I'm ready to do the work. But anyway, I have such a good example. I have good examples in my life and I can't wait to, to be part of that. So I'm going to slowly take these out because they're falling out. You're already a mother to Luna and the rest of your pack. Oh, so it was funny too because when you were talking to this, she jumped up on you. I was like, oh, there's Luna saying like, oh, hello, mom. You're already yeah. my mom. So <laughs> you're already practicing. So man, I love having pets. They they just keep you so great. We don't deserve dogs or cats. You know, they are just so like unconditional love. I tried unconditional love. It didn't work for me. Like, if you are going to poop in my shoes, I'm going to have a hard time trusting you with my shoes again, dog. You know what I mean? Or like with people, you know, if you do certain things, it's okay. It's within my right to like not like you anymore or to not want to be with you anymore or to not have you in my life anymore. You're on your journey. I respect that. I'm on mine. I love myself more and I choose me. And that my friends is the slogan of the day (laughs) priceless yeah i always i always say i love you from a distance thank you very much yeah yeah Yeah. there's nothing wrong with that there's there's if i could remind or teach myself something from 15 years ago would have been there is a difference between being treated well and treating yourself well we teach people how to treat us and if you don't know how to treat yourself then people are gonna walk all over you And that's really hard to come to terms with when, you know, you're rebuilding your life. It's like, oh, okay, it it is me and and that's okay. And I respect myself. I forgive myself. Let's turn a chapter. Let's turn a page. Let's start again with everything that we know and every desire and hope and dream and depression (laughs) that we have, you know, and let's learn from this and let's plant those seeds and let's move on. Let's close it. Let's grow and let's move on. Yeah. Beautiful. So Amanda, what would you say your superpower is? Oh boy. Um <laughs> <clears throat> superpower. I I don't know if this is true. I don't know if people feel this when I'm around them. Um, and I don't want to pretend like I'm not I'm not the type of person to like beef up my own ego um but I hope that my superpower is that when I'm around people I am that supportive structure for them and I can give them a listening ear or I can give them the feedback that they're looking for um basically just a mirror of the person because whatever they're going through is their stuff and I'm um I'm not really of the the believer that like, oh, you know, I was talking with this person and they just had really bad energy. So now I have bad energy on me. I'm not really affiliated with that thought pro Like I just, I haven't, maybe in my marriage, I witnessed that like, man, I feel really down in the dumps because of X, Y, right. But that was more circumstantial and, you know, my environment, but I, I don't really feel that if I'm in the presence of some, somebody or witnessing someone going through the shit of life, that I have their shit of life on me, it's more of like maybe a mental drain. But if they need to have somebody with them while they're going through something to witness them, I feel like I'm a good witness and I'm a good sturdy structure to lean on, you know? And I hope that my superpower is that people, my, my people and anybody, I guess, but they feel supported. And they feel that they can have a breakdown with me there as they're like chaperone to, you know, depression. That sounds awful. Not to depression, but to like, to, to figuring out what they're going through and to help. I'm the linguist, you know, I, I help translate what's going on. I, I'm, I kind of, I reverberate it back to them. You know, I see what I see and I say what I see and I, Um, If they want that, right? Like you got to be respectful and, hey, do you want feedback? (laughs) You're kind of a mess right now. You know, that's not what I would say, but yeah, I hope I'm I'm a supportive structure. But what I kind of hear is like your life experience, like all that you went through gives you space to really be with people because there's really not much to do when people are going. Sometimes there is giving a nudge, but 
it's mostly to be with them, right? To yeah. hold space for them so they can come out on the other yeah. side, right? You're far more eloquent than me. I like to hold space for people. That's, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So if you had a magic wand and you could people give people any quality, what would it be and why? Okay, I've thought long and hard about this question. And I think if I could give folks peace of mind, just like not a reset button, but like that peace of mind button, like, you know what, I'm overwhelmed or you know what, I'm having the best day of my life. I want that button right there. And I want them to be able to record themselves talking to themselves, talking to themselves, like going through it, going through the happiness, the joy, like having their kids in the background at Disneyland and they are so tired, but their kids are having a blast and they want to remember this moment. I want to have a button right there. I, I want to be able to record like a five minute moment each time throughout somebody's life so that then if at the end they have time and they have the opportunity, you know, God willing, to sit and watch those little clips and to be happy and to feel joy and pride for all that they've gone through the the bad times the good times the times where they were falling apart the times that they were putting themselves together that's what i want i would love that that would be like the biggest gift like hey i can't give you money i can give you time I can give you the most important thing. I can give you your time back for just a little bit to remind you of how awesome you've done and that you can let go of any sort of feeling about your life or parenthood or, you know, cheating, cheating on a school test or something like look, look at your trajectory. Remember the good times. Remember for the things that you did that were holy to yourself, were respectful to yourself and to others and the times that you kind of sucked at it too like don't forget like you're human and that's okay so yeah i want that button because I, I think we hold on to the the crappy stuff right the our traumas and yeah, and the yeah. we love to talk about them but how nice if you could just have this like highlight reel right of all your best yes look at all yeah. the time like i love this idea yeah brilliant oh. brilliant thank you yeah wouldn't that just be like oh, you're on, you know, unfortunately, this is your time. This is this is the end time for you. Here is a three-hour movie that you're going to sit here and watch. Here's some popcorn, your favorite snacks. <laughs> and this is this is, this is is the dying process. God, or even so just when you're having a bad day, if you're having one of your depression kind of yeah. mode. Like, you could be oh, like, oh, yeah. my life sucks. You'd be like, oh, highlight reel. Ooh. Ah, I'm out, right? That's, that's a great idea. Have it accessible. Okay. Yeah, at all times. Yes. I love it. I love it. All right. I'm going to give you a three-parter here and you can answer okay. might be one answer for the whole thing. It might, you could take a piece of it, however you want to do this. So what made you who you are today? What was your biggest lesson? What took the most courage or when did you stand for something that really mattered? I might need you to repeat some of that back. Absolutely. Um, I so, think that, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So what was your biggest lesson? Or when did you take a, take a, what took the most courage or when did you stand for something that matters? Uh, okay. So uh, the most courage I think was leaving, leaving my marriage. That was the most difficult thing that I, it was something I never thought I would ever do. You know, you don't grow up thinking I'm going to get a divorce. Like that's not the greatest experience one would go through um it's very scary and it's kind of an identity crisis as well um with this answer i think i can answer a few questions uh, but you know you look at your your relationships and you're like wow this just isn't working time and time again and i should be able to trust this person time and time again and there's no trust and now there's no trust in myself and um i think leaving leaving what I consider a, a domestic violence situation for years and years was the most difficult thing. And I think I lost a little bit of, you know, a little bit of myself with that process because it is so scary. And it is one of, one of the recovering books that I bought, um, you know, kind of getting out of that kind of experience 
it called it deprogramming. You have to deprogram yourself from the situation that you've been in for so long because it's been so normalized. And after I had left, you know, in the middle of the night, it was raining. It was January 31st. And I'm sorry if this is story time again, <laughs> but um, I'm pr proud, proud of this moment as well because it was so difficult and because it was necessary. And I didn't know it was necessary until I was doing it. And I had a divine intervention moment with it, which made it all the more important to me to remember because I feel like it is one of those kind of hot button moments because I do remember it. I feel it in my body. It's a very somatic experience, but you know, my, my ex-husband had come home on a binge. She had been driving drunk. He crashed his truck. He um, eventually told me that he actually broke a few ribs and um, through that crash, but he had come home completely intoxicated and, um, you know, the rest of the evening was basically hours and hours of me being tormented and verbally assaulted. And um, the divine moment was when, you know, it's almost 10, 1030 at night, January 31st. And I'm in, you know, our farmhouse, which I had to sell, which is heartbreaking. And I actually dreamed about it last night. I tend to dream that I break into it and the owner is okay with it. It's a weird thing. We can talk about that later. Um, she and I are best friends though, in my dream space, but <clears throat> the divine moment came, you know, after I'm filming, I'm filming what's going on. I'm recording what's going on to show him the next day. Cause that's what I would do because he would never believe me that he had a drinking problem. And, uh, the divine moment came after hours of him following and berating me around the house, um, including walking in on me, showering, talking poorly about my body, about my family, um, and just really going for it. And um, <clears throat> the moment came when I was, my back was towards the window on the second floor and of the extra bedroom because I moved all my shit in there. I'm like, I'm not, I can't sleep next to you. Like, this is not okay. <clears throat> I don't feel comfortable. And he's just drunk and just, you know, being what he would be kind of like a animal person and um and he's completely blacked out right like he doesn't remember anything and so I have this moment of just I've like been shaking and crying for hours and my back is towards the window of this like 100 year old house and I feel hands on my shoulder this is the only time I've ever believed in the divine of like something behind the veil soft warm hands are just over my shoulders, right? It's just kind of like piggyback style, right? And in my right ear, I hear, you know what sounds good? Pack a bag and leave. And when that person, spirit, was talking to me, everything kind of dimmed in reality. My ex-husband is over the extra bed, you know, yelling at me, throwing things past me. I stopped crying. I, it was kind of like time stopped and I could, and I just kind of, ew, just kind of like powered down for a moment. And you know, what sounds good. Pack a bag and leave. I'm like, yep, that's what's happening. And so I stopped crying. I went on autopilot. I wa I beelined it for the bedroom. I dumped out my gym bag. I'm in my PJ. I'm not even wearing a bra. I'm in my PJs. I'm, I'm dumping out my gym bag. I just kind of I don't even know what I'm throwing in the bag, just like laundry or something, socks, <laughs> whatever. Go to the office, get my work laptop because work's important. <laughs> you got to keep working, even if you're having a bit of, you know, quarter life crisis. Uh, grab my work laptop because COVID and I was working from home. Went downstairs in the middle of the night and my ex-mother-in-law was sitting in the dark on her chair, just kind of like listening or like chaperone. God bless her. Like she... Got honestly though, she's she's a wonderful person. Um, because she lived with us and got the keys. It's raining, hailing, and I walked to the car, started it, and he's yelling at me, if you leave, this is it, you know, like really going for it. Like awful Hallmark, you know, movie moment. And I leave. And it's the height of COVID. I'm like, where the hell am I gonna go? No one knows what I've been going through. They know snippets, but I would never tell everybody the hell the crap because I don't want to like barf that on some I don't need people to worry I got it I got it I'm a strong independent woman I got it no no I need help this is like an emergency now I cannot go back my safety is in question so 
I went to my brother's place in Linwood and it was, it, sorry, it was close. It was like 30, 20, 30 minutes away. Called him in the middle of the night. I'm like, hi, what are you doing? He's like, what's wrong? Like he knew immediately. <laughs> and he's like, get here, just come here. And like a good Irish family, he poured me a three, three finger glass of whiskey. And my sister-in-law who was going through her, um, she's a therapist. She was going through her schooling. So she like brought out the DSM five, you know, slapped it on the table. And for the next two or three hours, I am just unleashing the skeletons that have been accumulating in my closet. And being in a predicament such as this, that like now I'm living with my brother for a week and interviewing for a new job within my agency and my parents are leaving for Hawaii, but I'm going to li go live with them now because they're a couple hours away and that's the most convenient. And they're allowing me to stay with it. I have these structures that I can lean on that I never knew I had until like this moment. I'm very proud of this process because I had my family helping me and willing to hear everything that was going on because it was my mother who identified like you're a domestic violence survivor. You are. Here are a couple groups. I'm happy to go with you to these group meetings. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Like it's fine. Like this is just this is just marriage. This is what it is. This is what it's meant to be a wife. You just have to put up with some of the shit that your fucking husband, you know, this is just it. You just gotta grin and bear it. No, no, this is not right. Right. And after seven years of it, you don't know that. And so I think I've answered the question, but basically deciding that after realizing that it's not a closet full of skeletons, it's an entire warehouse. And there are things that are not normal that have been normalized for survival. And that's okay. But now you get to choose. These are the, this is the fork in the road. You choose to go back. And you know what you're going to have, like, it's going to continue and it's going to get worse as it has, or you can choose yourself. Choosing myself was the best decision I have ever done in my life. And again, my ex-husband's on his journey and I wish him the best of luck. And I've accidentally seen him a few times and it kind of has me spiraling when I do, because it is so shocking. Um, because you want the best for your marriage, because you want the best for the person that you choose. But I chose wrong. And I've had to forgive myself for that. And I don't think I need to say I hope my family forgives me because they were so supportive and they understood it. So having my family as a support structure is something I'm very proud about and um, is why I'm the person I am today. I am a survivor. I am strong. I can trust myself again. It took a while, but with their help and with their guidance and, and their good examples of what it means to live authentically and what it means to parent authentically, you know, not just my parents parenting me, but my brother and his, you know, my sister-in-law parenting their kids. Like I had to live with them and I got to see that family structure and that was so healthy for me. So how, like, yeah, my family, my, my family structure is why I'm the person I am today. I am so blessed. I'm so lucky. And my dog is back down here and she's staring at me and she's whining. Hi. <laughs> I guess she learned how to open the door upstairs that I locked her behind. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I answered all the questions though. And I want to do your questions. Justin. It was all perfect. And it was so beautiful. It's so beautiful. You know, like, it's like you chose you and what the yeah. gift, right. And, and it's one of the things that struck me as you were talking is like, we're taught that it's just normal, right? It's, it's just normal. It's just the way it is until it's almost like we're unblinded un until we get the blinders taken off and we're like oh wow yes that was abuse right that's not okay ever right uh, but w we have a tendency to normalize everything for us to be yeah. at peace, right to for, for yeah. us to be able to navigate life right and and sometimes to our detriment right so yeah to our sacrifice yeah and that sucks. <laughs> that is not fun and it doesn't feel good. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. 
And, yeah. and well, that's when we're trying to fix other people, right? Or we think it's our job to fix the, the other person in our world when it's never our job to fix them. Like we could be there and support no, no. them. We could mirror back their greatness yeah. to them. But ultimately it's never our job to fix our the people in our world and and also and and asking for help is always the place to like we want to like present this picture to the world that we have it all together so we don't tell them right what's going on. but ultimately yeah. like it's not serving us it's not serving them um when we when we hiding what's going on in our world so kudos for for stopping judgment of yourself and just getting mm-hmm. the help that you needed right i mean that's the other okay. of why we're here is to it's our judgments of ourselves and each other that really like holds us back too right so when we're not judging the mm-hmm. situation where we could just look at what's happening and 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 make the decision based on what's best for me then we're always gonna have powerful decisions and and be so much happier yeah. <laughs> And, yeah. and the, the other thing that I think is beautiful <laughs> is the angels and earth angels oh. that were there, right? It Man, was yeah. like, like, yes, there were the hands that you felt on your back, but then there was your brother and, you know, like, and, and the divine timing of everything. <laughs> she really wants your attention. Huh? I'm sorry. No worries. Yeah, it's she, all good. The, so the divine big. timing of everything, right? That, that, that your sister-in-law is in that training, that you yeah. get to really unfold, uh, un- like, just unravel all that is there and and really start talking that your mom named what was going on and said no this is a fact this isn't just like your imagination right Mm -hmm. that all of it is just so so beautiful so so beautiful well Um, I got to learn about family history with it too you know like family like how I'm, I'm the only one in this generation of my family to get a divorce you know, and I think I'm I'm one of two people in my friend group that have gotten a divorce. I was the first one, you know, and yeah. I kind of like leading the way, you know, I like being the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like if something isn't working for you, it's okay to walk away and choose yourself, you know, like I feel like that's been, yes, my, yes, my yes, and yes, for a few years. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And more suffering in silence. <laughs> no, you don't need to do that. No, we don't. We don't. The thing, what, what I find interesting in what you're saying is like, we're, we're so good at adapting and, and trying to make it work that it really takes really opening our eyes and seeing what is going on, right? We have to be willing to open our eyes and see, right? Rather than just, okay. Well, it just is the way it is, right? It's like, no, well, it is, it might be the way it is, but no, it's not okay the way it is. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. It's not you. okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm, I'm a firm believer of doing the work and like, if something's not working, then evaluate it. You know, yeah. at work, it's okay to do a process improvement. It's okay to go through these trainings that they put you through and how do we make these policies better? we improve them. We look at what's working. We look at what's not working and we trash the the crap that doesn't work. If, if it's so supportive at work, why can't I support myself in process improving or, or ups, upskilling my, my ability to cope or ability to love my partner or ability to love myself? It's all a process improvement. There's yeah. got to be space for that. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's, that's essentially, you know, like we think that life is a destination, but it's just a journey, right? And how can yes. we make it better? How can we bring more to it? How can we, you know, be happy? You know, this, mm-hmm. these are the circumstances. Now what? Now, or now how do I create the best, right? Is it staying? Mm-hmm. Is it going? Like, it's up to us to really choose us. Again, yeah. coming and it's, to, yeah. can, can, can we treat ourselves like that precious little child that we are, right? Yes. Somebody yes. had us Somebody had us uh, find a baby picture and just have it up so we can remember we are that. We are that precious, beautiful. That's a good idea. <laughs> I love that. Every moment. Yeah. So last question. What do you want people to remember about you? Mm. 
Man, sorry, long silence for a podcast. Um, no worries. You what take do I want? Time. Um, that I may like if I'm like this is like a hundred years from now, you know. Um, I would like people to remember me by maybe never learning fully how to love myself or like you know that it that that in itself is a journey but that I loved my family and that I loved my friend group and the people that I've been associated with and the work that I've been associated with that I'm passionate about so many different things that it it tends to keep me busy and it tends to make me very happy when I'm actively involved in it so that kind of undercurrent is so quiet it's just like a little trickle instead of like a raging river you know um that I am proud of myself even though I know I'm still messy on the periphery that I'm forever learning and growing just like they are and that I never really truly know what's going on. I just kind of have a really good sense of like, uh, what is it? Like, not commitment, what's the word? Oh, my dyslexia is showing. Um, not competitiveness of like, I got this. Like that kind of sense of like, oh, not self-trust. Dang it. I was trying to be so eloquent with my speaking and I'm failing at it. Uh, confidence. There it is. Oh, geez, that was painful. Confidence that I have a total, huge, huge false sense of confidence with every, everything I go into. It is a false sense of confidence that everything's going to work out. I'm going to have a great time. I'm not going to spend all that much money. No, no. You go to Costco. You have a great time. You spend all your money, right? Like, <laughs> that's okay. It just happens. But I have this, this, um, fun with it though I I do have a lot of fun and I do find joy and um that you know even though I went through that sort of marriage and that sort of time in my life that I'm still healing in my own ways and that I have made room in my heart and in my head for a new person and they're brilliant and they're you know I always look at them and they're so shiny, you know, like they're, I'm so grateful and I'm so blessed and I'm so you know, grateful to myself and grateful to this person for seeing me during that time, during my process um, of unfurling and deprogramming myself. And they're brilliant. They're just, they're, I feel like a little girl with them. You know, I feel that innocence and I feel that excitement every time I'm with them and, and I'm so lucky that I get to now share my life with this person and that I found it. The, the all knowing it, you know, I found it, I made it. Like I feel that deep down, even with my mess and even with my false sense of confidence. That's what I want people to remember is that I found it. Beautiful. So let me just briefly say this because it's screaming in my head. It's like <laughs> all the people you found, they're a reflection of you. Mm -hmm. if yeah. you wouldn't be who you are you wouldn't have found the people you found so they're a oh. reflection of you that's beautiful yeah mm. as are you well I'm certainly trying <laughs> with all that confidence <laughs> thank you that's that's very I'm gonna write that down keep that next to a little baby photo of Amanda absolutely yeah Good maybe a toddler too. photo which is cuter as a toddler <laughs> whatever yeah. one of I looks, the most yeah i looked like a little alien baby i had no hair for like two years and i had these big giant green eyeballs you know <laughs> and i was super pale like oof i was but a yeah. baldy too about two my mother said i had the biggest hat collection of babies because <laughs> but whatever yeah. which is why i have long hair now right Traumatized. yeah likewise yeah <laughs> <laughs> confident <laughs> yeah man thank you so much for being here with us today thank you for playing thank you for bringing your wisdom your vulnerability you. and your yeah. playful curiosity to our podcast <laughs> today 
for everyone listening, thank you for being here with us. If you loved what you heard, please leave us a review. Please share with your friends. And please remember, you are extraordinary and you rock. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye for now. Amanda, you want to say bye? Yeah. Thank you for listening and trust yourself, love yourself, and come back and listen to more episodes because these ladies are pretty awesome.